Let's take a look at how to rig a simple character in Adobe Animate using the Bone tool. Tip tot. You can download the resources for this tutorial by going to www.tiptart.xyz and clicking on the resources page. Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome to another Adobe Animate tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at rigging this simple character inside of Adobe Animate using the bone tool. Okay, so when you download the character rig download.fla from the website, you'll be um, confronted with this character that I've chopped up into all little bits, okay? Um, basically, I've drawn a section for each part of the character and turned it into its own symbol so that it appears in our library over here. Uh, and you'll notice I've chopped him up into um, legs, uh, lower legs, toes, feet, ankles, basically anywhere where there is a joint that I want to articulate or move. The other thing that I've done is I've moved the anchor point of each of these shapes to the correct position. So for example, here, your anchor point would usually be in the middle of the shape. And should you come to rotate it, he would rotate from the middle, which is obviously wrong. So I've just moved that anchor point down on the head, down to the chin area so that it rotates from the chin. Okay. Done the same thing for the neck there. Um, the chest, I've actually done it down at the belly button and you'll find out why later. The hips I've left right in the middle. Shoulders are obviously connected to the shoulders and the lower arms are connected at the elbow and the hands are connected at the wrists. Same thing for the legs, they've all been moved up to the previously connecting joint. Um, even down to the toes, they're connected to the foot so that when they rotate, they rotate in the right way. This will obviously depend on your drawing, where you position these. Um, but suffice to say that once you've selected all of these, um, their anchor points should be correctly positioned. So once you've done that step, the next step is to actually rig this character. So I'm going to grab my bone tool, um, shortcut M, and I'm just going to click on the hips and I'm going to drag to the chest area like so. OK, um, now you'll notice that it's dragging and snapping automatically to my anchor point. If I, for example, go from the chest to the neck next. Like this, that was from the chest to the, the head, excuse me, let me zoom in to make it a little easier from the chest to the neck like so, and then the neck to the head like so, it's snapping to those anchor points I made. If yours doesn't do that, if it's just making them wherever you release the mouse, you need to go to your preferences drawing tab and uncheck this auto set transformation point. If that's checked, then it will set the transformation point to be wherever you release the mouse. If that's the way you wanna work, that's fine. I just prefer this way, okay? So um, I'm actually gonna go, I'm gonna ignore the shoulders. I'm gonna go from the, the hips down here and snap those up to the shoulders. And you'll see why in a minute, but essentially if you connect this bone here to this bone here when you move the neck and rotate the neck it's going to shift the shoulders around and make them go crazy so i like adjusting it from the um, bottom of the chest instead and you can lock it away so that it doesn't break essentially so we're just going to go through and we're going to just click and drag from one section to the next and it's going to automatically connect up all of our different elements for us and you'll notice that your layer order changes at this point but not to worry we'll be fixing that as well Oops, see there, I, I created a bone accidentally from the knee to the toes, which is not what you want. You want it to go from the foot to the toes, obviously. Okay, so here we have our character. He's uh, all set up, he's got bones, and you'll notice now if I click and drag, I can move these things around. <laughs> um, although his head is kind of detached at the moment. If that's what you wanted, then great. Maybe he could be like a headless ghost, but um, for us, it is not. You'll also notice that it's kind of hard to individually adjust these sections without affecting the others. So what I like to do is in your um, uh, library, there's a shape here called MT, which stands for just magnet tracker. Um, I'm just gonna rename that to null. So it's like a null object. And on my background layer, I'm just gonna drag those nulls in and we're gonna position them. Oops, oh, my layer is locked. Uh, we're just gonna position them at the end of each limb, okay? And this just gives us one extra control point for us to use. So I'm going to put one at the end of each hand, one on the head, and one at the end of each toe. And then we're going to go back to our bone tool, select anywhere on your armature, and we're just going to connect the hands, oops, excuse me, uh, the hands to the null objects and the head to this null object and the toes to these null objects. And what this does, it just gives us an extra level of control for manipulating these small joints, okay? So uh, the next step is to make these nulls invisible. So you can just double click those 
uh, to go inside the symbol, go to the properties of that, and then just drag the opacity of each bit down to zero. This will make them hidden, but still selectable, which is very useful. So next step is to make sure that your layers are all now in the correct order. So I'm just gonna grab the neck and hit Control Shift down to push it behind uh, the body. And do the same maybe for each of the arms, just to make sure that they are behind the body. I'm going to push all of the legs behind the hips as well, but I'm going to bring up the feet to the front with control shift up and then just select both of the, to the toes and control shift up those as well. Um, you'll notice that even if all these symbols were previously on separate layers, now that they're an armature, they have been moved to an armature layer. So the only thing that is on the separate layer now is the background, uh, including the null objects, they are now in this armature. So when you add it to an armature, it just brings it into the same layer. So now you can just start clicking and dragging around, but you'll notice a few things. Okay, our character's arms and, and um, legs can kind of shift out of their sockets a little bit, which, you know, isn't great. Um, so what we're going to do is lock off some of these bones. You'll notice it's kind of hard to select these bones at this point. So what I'm going to do is go down to my armature, just click the whole layer and go over to my um, object properties. Like so. Um, and sorry, under the frame properties, you'll notice at the bottom here, it says options, type all the time, style solid. I'm just gonna change that style to wire, which makes it a little bit easier for me to A, select, and B, see the direction of the parent and child of each of these bones, okay? So for example, now let's zoom in. Oops, I've accidentally left his body on top there. Let's just push that below. Um, from here, you can select a bone and whenever you're selecting a bone, you're actually controlling the parent. And that's why I've got changed it to this wire mode. So you can see the thick end of this triangle is the parent end, so the head of the bone, and the thinner end is the tail of the bone. If you select a bone, you're always controlling the head end of it. So for example, I don't want this one to rotate because if I allow this joint to rotate, his arm comes away from his body, okay? So I'm just gonna select this joint and it's gonna bring up my properties and say joint rotation. It's currently on, I want to turn that off. Because we're controlling the head, it will also automatically do the other side for you. And then when you start manipulating this joint, it now no longer comes away from the body, okay? Really useful. We want to do the same thing for these hips here because you know, I don't know about you, but my legs can't really shift about in their sockets. So we'll just turn those off as well. And then when we drag our toes out, there you go, it no longer moves in the socket. But you'll notice it's kind of hard to control what we're doing here. Um, if I move his hand a little bit, the whole arm still moves slightly. And what we can do is now adjust the strength of each of those segments so that they move in proportional relation to each other. For example, this is another reason we added this extra bit at the end here. When you select a bone, you'll notice at the very top, you've got this location panel and you have a speed option of 100. I'm gonna incrementally change each preceding bone down. So I'm gonna leave the hand at 100, but the elbow I'm gonna put at 50 and the shoulder I'm gonna put at 10. Now watch the difference. When I drag this hand up a little bit, okay, the entire arm shifts and moves. And don't worry, we'll fix that little problem later on. If I drag this arm, it's much easier to control and reposition around. It's you're kind of hard to see in, in video, um, but when you're clicking and dragging this, you'll notice, you know, I have to move the mouse a lot further now before the rest of the arm begins to follow it. Whereas here, if I move even a little bit, the whole arm follows it. Okay, so moving that, moving this, yeah? So we can do the same thing over here. Select our bone, 100%. Select our bone, 50% and select our bone, put this down to say 10%. I like to do the same thing for the legs, but this one here obviously has an extra joint because we've got the toes. So the toes I'm gonna to leave at 100%. The feet I'm gonna to push to maybe 75, 50 on the previous bone, and let's do 20 on this bone. And this is really gonna depend on, you know, your model and, and how you like to work, but I just like to adjust these uh, to these figures that I've figured out um, ahead of time based on the, the style in which, you know, my, my drawings and animations are. Um, oh, so that was still meant to be 50 there, wasn't it? Yes. And this one is 75. Like so. Okay. There are some other options here as well. Like for example, if you wanted to pin a bone in place, you could select this bone and select pin. Uh, and that will then, I can still 
you know, try and move it, but it won't let me. It's pinned in place. This can be useful if you want to, um, for example, pin your character to the floor. So you can move the rest of the character around. So if we select both of these and pin them, for example, I can still select the other parts of my character and move them and rotate them and adjust his arms and things like that. But it won't let me, it'll even let me like minorly adjust the bones and things like this. Okay. Um, but that toe is pinned to the floor. So no matter where I move it, it's pinned in position. Okay. Uh, and don't worry, we'll, we'll be fixing all of these things that I'm breaking uh, just by hitting undo. So let's check my bones, see how many times I undid it. 75% fine, don't want it pinned in place and we don't want this one pinned in place either. So now we have our bones adjusted to the speed that we like. They're much easier to control, uh, much easier to drag around. We can move our character's heads. I think I will adjust the speed of the neck down a little bit, maybe to 50%, okay? So now all those bones are um, correctly sped, but you'll notice that when he moves, his joints are a little bit broken. So if you go to your free transform tool and select the joint, like so, you'll notice that you can then move the bone around independent of the rig, okay? And it will actually update the rig for you. The easiest way to make sure your joints line up correctly is to go to outline mode, and you'll, you'll see then where your joints you know, do connect. You can reposition the anchor point, which will update the rig. If you go back to your selection tool, you'll see that. Um, and obviously if I try to move the rig with the selection tool, it's going to move the actual rig. So the way you control the point is by pressing Q and then you can reshift this until it lines up to the way you want. For example, something like that. You know, if you wanted your control points for your hands to be closer to your fingers, so they more, accurate, more accurately represent the movements you want to make, you can do that. I'm just gonna move this joint over here and I think I'd probably just position that a bit neater and you can use the d-pad for fine control like so okay so now his elbows are a lot better connected up his knees and stuff looked pretty okay so we'll leave them as they are let's turn off outline mode and now if I go and drag this guy around Oops, sorry, I'm still on the free transform tool there. If I go and drag this guy around, his elbows are now much better connected. Okay, brilliant. Final steps then for rigging this character would be to constrain some of the joint movements. For example, at the moment, I don't know about you, but he can do a full 360 on his arm. Now he might be double jointed, um, but I doubt it. Uh, I don't know about you, but I can't do that with my arms. Um, so let's limit this guy's movement um, by selecting and um, limiting these circles here on his joint movements, okay? So let's zoom into one of his arms here. Now, shoulder movement, let's take a look at that first. I'm gonna select the shoulder bone. You'll notice you can constrain joint rotation. You can also turn on joint translation, which allows you when the arm is dragged to move a certain amount, okay? And then you can just constrain that. That's useful for things if they extend or contract, you know, obviously like shoulder joints and stuff don't do that. So we won't allow that to happen. I'll just turn it back off. Um, we will constrain this joint's rotation. You'll notice the circle turns into an angle. It's kind of hard to see on the screen there. But if I start adjusting this, you'll notice you can constrain the joint to say, only move directly upwards. So think of it like a pie wedge, yeah? Um, but it can go all the way down. So you've got pretty much 180 degree movement on that joint there. What this does is if I now click and drag, you'll notice before he could put his shoulder behind his head, but now no matter how much I drag, he won't move his shoulder any further, which just limits it to a more natural and realistic looking movement, okay? I think I've turned the speed down a bit too low on here, but we can just increase that if you want to. Like you say, it's completely up to you. Um, so the elbow, I like to leave it all the way around because um, it's actually much easier to control that way. Thinking about it, he can either can have his hand like this or like this, right? So you'd need the 360 degrees. The wrist, however, I just like to constrain to normal 45 degrees. So we'll just constrain both of those. We'll constrain the shoulder, but we'll push this one back up, obviously, to the full 180 degree motion or thereabouts. The neck, I like to constrain just a straight to 45 degrees as well, as well as the head. Um, the hip movements here, they uh, aren't allowed to rotate, so it doesn't matter. But these ones we will definitely constrain to the point where 
you only really need to adjust one angle of these, which is how high they can bring it. And that just depends on your character's flexibility. Again, the knees, I would link, uh, constrain these so that you just can't bend them one way. So obviously your, beg your legs only go in one direction, but they can go pretty much all the way around, um, like flat up against the thighs in the other direction. So we'd, we'd add this circle to go all the way up, reduce this angle to be uh, flat on the knee there. Okay. Same thing kind of for the ankles. Um, I would constrain these so that they can point all the way down, but not much further up than where they are now because you can't really lift your feet much further up than this. So all the way down, but only a little bit up. The toes as well, I would just then constrain to a normal 45 degrees just to give you a bit of freedom. And then obviously you can play with this as much as you'd like. Now, you can click and drag to animate and move your character to your heart's content. Okay, I'm just gonna fix the head joint there, I think, because um, it's a little bit, a little bit janky. So we'll just fix that like so. Oops, with uh, the, the bone tool to move it. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, we can go inside the neck here though, and what I might do is just erase some of this neck. Maybe not that much, maybe something like that. Just because when he turns his head, um, you can kind of see past it a little bit and that's no good. So we'll just do that. Um, and yeah, let's leave that there. That looks okay. So when it comes to animating this character, this is now pretty much rigged, okay? And animating it is really simple. You just give yourself some frames to work with by pressing F5, obviously. Uh, and moving to the position where you'd want to animate him. So let's have him do like a little wavy. Um, in the example, he was jumping, but we'll do something a bit more simple here to keep it short, okay? So I'm gonna say he starts off like this. By frame six or so, let's have this arm start to come up, this arm start to come down, his body, oops, I think I turned off joint rotation for that one, which is bad, I don't want that, I want it on. So let's just do that. His body starts to twist over to the right. You'd compensate for that, I think, by his legs. So a good thing is you can turn on onion skin and position things to be precisely where they were before. If you want um, to rotate just a single joint, you can hold shift and then rotate it and it will constrain it just to that single proportion. This is good for like minute control. For example, you don't really want his um, Oh, excuse me. You don't really want his uh, his legs just kind of jangling all over the shop. So you can um, uh, you can fix that by why is that only affecting that leg? That's bizarre. Is it because I've got something selected? Why is it doing that? Is it because I've turned off? I've allowed joint rotation there. And I've allowed joint rotation there. So you should, that should work. Have I left a pin? Yeah, see, there you go. I've left a pin in this foot, which means that when I was adjusting this, it wasn't moving the leg. So there you go, pretty easy to fault find. Let's leave, let's leave that in the episode, I think. Um, so yes, you can go down to the really far and as, as long as you zoom in, it's quite easy to see um, what you're doing. So let's see, the first pose is gonna be like that. By frame 12, he's gonna start moving this arm down and this arm up and maybe he'd start going in this direction with his head. Let's go back to frame six and pull his head this way. And as you can see, the character just starts moving. If you turn off onion skin, it's easier to see. Okay. So obviously you'd, you'd take some time and animate this properly. Um, but let's say I just want to right click. I can copy a pose, paste it into a particular position. Um, move a keyframe just by clicking and dragging it. Copy the first pose again. Paste it into position. So I'm not going to go into animating this. You know, that's just normal animation stuff. Click and drag, move the positions, add the keyframes. Um, but as you can see, our character now rigs and moves based on the selections that you've made. Um, take a bit of time, make him squash jump, see what the limits are. Uh, and that's pretty much it. That's how you rig a basic character using the bone tool. Um, there is a, a incredible plugin 
um, called um, SMR, Smart Magnets, which is uh, really good for like advanced rigging, kind of like um, Duik in Adobe After Effects. If you want to see that kind of thing in a tutorial, let me know. I'm learning it myself at the moment because this is quite limited. It's quite a limited way of making characters move, where this Smart Magnet tool is uh, incredibly powerful. So let me know if you'd like a tutorial on that. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I uh, hope to see you next time on another episode of Tip Tart, uh, where we explore something a little bit different. So thank you, and I'll see you next time. I'd like to say a massive thank you to my level two and above members, Unknown Ghosts, WN62, Anonymous, Mel M. Hoover, Maybe Sharma, Ralika M, Mun336, Ian Costello, and Dushyant Singe. Thank you very much, you guys. You guys are keeping the lights on. Subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.